Hey, hey, and welcome to After Hours here at Linda's Electric Quilters. We are so excited to have you here tonight. We can't wait to show you some free, fun, free hand techniques. Free, fun, <laughs> free hand techniques. All right, that's one way to look at it. Um, tonight, we're going to be taking a look at the Color Play panel. This is all new. Mm -hmm. um, this is Color Play by Patty Carey of Northcott. Um, so this cool panel um, has some really interesting techniques in it yes. based on the fact that you already have some nice pre-printed designs to okay. work from. Mm -hmm. So if you want to cut them apart and turn it into an actual quilt, okay. you have that. Or if you, or if you just want to leave it together. You and these borders. She just loves borders. <laughs> just throw borders on it. That borders solve everything. I may do. You can just put a couple borders on there and have a throw, or you can just leave it by itself just for a tester piece. But it, is, it has some great techniques on there, so we can show you how to make it freehand, right? Definitely. <laughs> um, so you've got three blocks on the top, the kind of color pinwheel there in the center, and then three blocks on the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, tonight, we're going to be taking a look at the color pinwheel in the center, mm -hmm. um, how to break apart that to do a couple different designs. And then we're also going to ease you in looking at continuous curve. There, for this block right here, there are so many different ways you can use continuous curve. It is an absolutely wonderful design and it goes fast. Yes, awesome. Fast, so fast, fast. Show you, that, you know, you need a ruler base. He's going to show you how to use some, a few templates and just how to do some easy freehand, but it looks really awesome. Definitely. So let's head over to our Nova and take a look at it. All right. This block is a consistent of a bunch of different half square triangles. And with this panel, you could cut these blocks apart and build them into a much larger quilt, or I'm just doing it like this for practice. But what we're looking at right here, like I said, is those half square triangles. And with a block this small, it's really nice to come in with something very easy on the eye and easy on the piecing, for instance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ultimate marking pencil and I'm going to begin to mark out the continuous curve. So starting here at the bottom left of the block, we're going to come over to the first seam, per se, that's printed right here. And then we're going to travel up, back down. Now we're going to go on to a 45 to the next seam right here come back down, over, up, down, 45, 45 down, over, up, down. And I'll mark it a little bit harder with my right hand. I just wanted you to see. And we're just gonna mark back and forth. We're gonna, when we get over here to the end, we're gonna come up and then travel backward. So now we're coming back this direction now that first square, we didn't do a 45. So we're actually going to drop down on that 45, back up, over, and then continue the process going all the way through this whole block. And then when you come through all the way back, you're going to finish off back here at the bottom. Okay. So I'm doing this 11 stitches per inch. You can do this on a long arm or on a domestic machine, um, depending on however you do your quilting, completely up to you. Take a few ties here to lock down our thread. And then we can get started. So remember, we're starting going to the right. Point. And you can kind of tell yourself point as you go. So point, 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 point. And you're taking yourself through this, building that muscle memory of a continuous curve. Also, if you're just getting a machine or if you've never dabbled in free motion before, continuous curve really helps you get the flow of the weight of the machine so you can get a good idea how it's gonna look. So we're coming through here. Remember, we didn't do that first 45, so we're gonna drop down on that 45, back up, under, and then travel back again. Now we can keep these curves a little bit thinner if we wanted to or you can make them a little bit larger, just depending on what look you're wanting to get.
right there, you can see that I missed one on that 45. So I'm gonna go back and fill that in in a second. So right here, just drop down and back up. Don't worry if you lose your spot when you're doing this, you can easily fill things in with a continuous curve. Just keep that natural flow that you've got going on. I have a very light grip on this machine when I'm doing this. You don't want to go all white knuckle on your machine when you're doing any free motion quilting. It'll end up giving you more strain and stress than it's worth. Just easily glide that machine where you need it to go. Coming around here to the other side. Like that. And do a quick tie off real quick. And then as you can see, continuous curve doesn't take too much away from the block. Granted, I did do a brighter thread on here so you could really see what I was doing. Um, but it really just adds a little bit of quilting onto it um, and gets a really good flow for free motion. Also kind of gives you that secondary pattern look, that kind of chain that creates all the way through this design. And you can do continuous curve on so many different things. Um, so really work through this and practice this one out and it can be very, very beneficial to you. So I'm gonna roll up the quilt real quick. We're gonna take a look at the big color wheel um, in the center of this panel. In this portion of the color wheel, I kind of wanted to show you uh, breaking it apart to look at it a couple of different ways. So in this one, you have this section right here, and then you've got these thinner uh, fan blades right here. So we're going to do some different quilting here as opposed to right here. It's really going to change the look of the color wheel and give it some good flow um, and good texture um, on the eye. So what I want to start off by doing is creating a channel right through here. You see how we have that uh, kind of shaded line that kind of goes in the different colors of the pigment. So I want to start with a channel between that because we're going to come in and put some pearls right through through, there, through the center. So I'm going to set my machine foot on the right side kind of going right against that line. I've got a ruler base on now and I've got a ruler to work from. So I'm going to set my machine foot on that, the right side of the foot on that line. And I'm going to first start by kind of gliding down and see if my ruler is nice and straight with the design. So I'm just moving the ruler if I need to, to keep that line nice and straight to create a channel. So I just move it back and forth until I get where I want it. And right about there makes me happy. So I'm going to go to the very top of that and give myself a bobbin pull up here. I'll do an initial tie off for myself. And then I'll start stitching down. Again, taking my time with this. There's no rush. With ruler work, you want to take your time. So I'll get down there to the bottom line of that channel, and then I'm going to free motion through that different shading just to get to the other side. So I'll come right down here to the point and then travel up. Once that's set, I wanna get, get it to the point where the left side of my foot is now on the left side of that line. And I'm gonna use my ruler now, line up the marking line on the ruler with the line that's already been stitched. Once I get that placement line on, I'll hold that nice and firm next to my ruler and then travel back up. Again, remember, take your time with ruler work. No rush. 
until we get to that section right there. Um, another thing when you are doing ruler work, it's nice if your machine has the option to stop with the needle in the down position. That way it doesn't go anywhere or move. Let's come in here and put some pearls right here through this channel that we've created. To keep you stitching continuously, I would recommend that you start stitching down this way. However, I'm going to pull up the thread and start this way and go back so you can see the process. But since you are already up here, I would just keep stitching coming straight down with those pearls. But give me just a second. Let me pull up my thread and let's go down to the bottom section and start that pearl process so you can see it. So we'll trim these away. I'm going to start right down here, going somewhere where there already is stitching, so I'm not creating a new line. It kind of looks continuous, giving myself a little bit of a tie-off. Have my needle start in that down position. And then with these pearls, what I'm going to do is kind of travel up the line a little bit and give them a little bit of that circular motion. So you're kind of using that stitching line that you've already built and then putting another one in, just like that. Starting off with a little bit of the flat edge and then coming and rounding it out. All the way up to the top. And then to keep the consistency and the overstitching the same, travel back down on this left side. You can use your ruler if you feel a little bit more comfortable. Travel right back down that stitching line. And then from here, we're going to do some feather work. So we're going to feather out this way and back. This is great practice because you have something to stay within. All the way up to the top. And then I'm just going to free travel back down the stem here on the side. Just like that until we get to the other side and then start the feathering process on the other side. start back up there. I would travel up down the side here um, as well just to close it off and that would be my stopping point. You also have um, another line to close off here if we're keeping the, the stitching the same. So we'll travel back down this way to the center portion and then here we would tie off our threads. So we can tie that section off. And then we could move to another portion if you're wanting to do all the same thing um, that's available to you in your throat space. So I'm going to move over to this right hand section right here, this next green to the right. So first thing we started off again was, was building our channel. So we're going to get our machine. Now this one's a little different. This one's going at a 45 where this one was vertical. It's a little easier for us. But we're going to pull up our thread over here. Give ourselves a little bit of a tie off. And for this one, I'm eyeballing it. Remember when we first got started, we moved the machine slowly to figure out exactly where we want to be. I'm just going to go for it now, just kind of eyeballing it. We're going to see how this works out for us. We'll start up our machine, hold our ruler nice and steady. Travel down. I'm going to stop the machine, needle down position, move my ruler, and again, just kind of free motion the vein here until I get the left side of the foot on the right side of that line. I'm going to put my ruler back, use the markings in the ruler. This is a four by eight ruler that we carry. Use that to give yourself a nice line to follow because you've already got one stitching line. So mark it up with, match it up with that, not mark it up with that, and keep going. Again, with ruler work, take your time to get it exactly where you need it to be. Just like that. So again, I would travel down this way. I'm going to trim my thread and come up and go this way so you can see what I'm doing. But just to keep it going continuously, I would travel down the other way for you. So you can start down here in this point. Again, if you are jumping, make sure you kind of start somewhere that's already got a stitching line. 
Do a couple of ties, and then start with your pearls. A little bit of a flat edge, and then round it up. A little bit of a flat and round. Again, free motion quilting is not a race. Take your time and you'll be much happier with it. So for this one, now we need to do feathers on either side. So I'm going to work down the outside of the wheel, inside that one section, and begin my left feathers. Now this is a simple um, stack feather on this side, just kind of trying to overstitch and stack right over that section. Now, there's another form of feather that you could work with as well. So what you could do would be the, um, let's call it the bumpity feather. I think there's another name for it, but we're gonna go with bumpity. So we're gonna travel back this way, keeping stitching consistent. And for this one, you'll start with one feather and then you're gonna wrap around the second one and overstitch the top and come back. Take that one, a little bit of overstitch, and then come back around. This one I'm making a little bit wider so you can see them, but you would try to keep the same size on those. But you can see that one just has a little bit of overstitching on every other one, where this one's more free flowy. I would start with this feather and then maybe you could move in to this other one whenever you get a chance. The next thing that I want to show you is um, adding in a different pattern right here like we talked about before we did the feather pearl sections up here. I'm going to be using my 4x8 ruler again for this and what I'm going to do is just do straight line quilting on here. So I'm going to start on an edge, we'll start right about here, and I'm going to pull up my thread, tie off. And then I'm going to lay my ruler, hold that nice and steady. Use your pinky, if you're uh, on using your ruler with your left hand, use your pinky to hold that ruler in place against the foot. And then use your thumb right here on the bottom of the ruler to help keep it steady. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm just going to head straight up. Again, remember, ruler work is not a race. So travel up until you get to the edge of the siding uh, of this little piece in your color wheel. Then I'm going to move my ruler off the side and then just kind of free motion a little bit up the edging. Grab my ruler again and what I really want to get is the side of the ruler laying on the actual stitching line that we've made. So I need to go a little bit further. Once I get that in alignment, then I'm going to travel back down with my ruler. If you need to adjust the ruler, Shift it down, make sure you don't lose any of your alignment. Move on down. Again, this is gonna be kind of that eyeball. Travel up the vein or the outside or the ditch of this section. Shift your ruler over until the side of the ruler is in align alignment with the stitching line you just made. And then travel back up again. Go up. Move your ruler over and come back down. Over, move your ruler, and you'll get really good at this where you don't have to stop the machine, but if you want to kind of get where you need to be, stop the machine with needle down and shift the ruler, you can definitely do that as well. Moving this one around. Go in and traveling back and forth from there. What that's going to do with that straight line cutting off the actual angle of this kind of gives it a different look um, in essence, gives it a different flow. Um, you could also turn your ruler the opposite direction and create a little bit of a crosshatch look at that point. I'm just going to keep straight lines just to make it a little bit easier, but you do whatever you want to do. That's the joy of free motion quilting with ruler work. So traveling back and forth through this as we go. 
once you get close to the end, travel back down that same stitching line. If you have any extra, back down one last time on that one. You would tie off real quick, just for that one piece. We can come up and trim our bobbin. And that's that line work that you've got right there. So then you could repeat that through all the other pieces. If you wanted to do something different in this section, say maybe you want to do ribbon candy, that's something you don't have to have a ruler to do. So if I started down here and pulled up my bobbin thread, take some single stitches to lock that down. And then with ribbon candy, I guess before I should have locked that down, let me draw it out for you. Let's pull that up, there we go. With ribbon candy, what we're doing here is just back and forth, back and forth, all the way through this section. You can widen those up if you want to. You can keep them nice and skinny and tight um, if you want to as well. There's different stencils, like we sell some the designs with lines that have straight lines that you can pounce powder. You could use those to help you keep your uh, ribbon candy nice and even, and then you could alternate these. You could do ribbon candy, straight line, ribbon candy, straight line to really kind of break it up um, and give it some real interest, which is a lot of fun. So we'll pull up our thread once more. We'll tie off. And then for this one, I've got no set spacing whatsoever on this, so I'm just going for it. And again, this is just back and forth. You don't have to follow directly on that ultimate marking pencil line. That's just a guide for you. So you're traveling up and down this one. This is a quick, fast, easy design. So you get up here. And then you would tie off and you've got two different line works there that you could work with. So what did you think, Mom? You did a great job. I Funka, love Funka. how you I love how you just took, you know, our four by eight ruler mm -hmm. that we sell, mm -hmm. the ultimate marking pen. I, I still love this thing. This is the best. This is a game changer I right know, here, y'all. Right? If you don't have an ultimate marking pencil, whether you're computerized or hand guided, you need an ultimate marking pencil. Yeah, we found these earlier this year or last year, or I can't even remember anymore. Remember. But it was but, I mean, you literally can draw the design, and you just saw that in the video, mm -hmm. and then you can iron it right off. It's so gone. It comes right Disappears. Exactly. Never was there. So you definitely need one of those. If you don't have a ruler, you definitely need some type of ruler to do the kind of things that he was doing. Mm -hmm. And we have those. We, I love these because they have the lines on them. Definitely. And I would also swing over to our website, longarmsupplies.net. Pick oh, yeah. up one of these color play panels. Yeah, There's exactly. There's so many things that you can do with them, and this will be a multiple part series. Yes. Um, so we just looked at two pieces today, um, but then we're going to bounce into the next two, and then the next two and then whoever knows what takes us from there i know right <laughs> that was tonight <laughs> awesome well thank you all so much for joining us uh, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and that you subscribe to our channel we will see you uh tomorrow for good morning leq bye